Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off with virtual and augmented reality news this week, and a team from the Future Interfaces Group at Carnegie Mellon have announced Fluid Reality, a high-definition haptic feedback system for use in VR. They have developed a novel micro-actuator system that can control little fluid-filled bubbles on demand, allowing for extremely precise haptic feedback. Using a method called electroosmosis, these pumps have no moving parts and can be manufactured at 100 microns thick. Eagle-eyed viewers might notice that this is a continuation of their previous work which we covered earlier in the year. This prototype uses a Pi Zero, as well as other off-the-shelf components, and combined with some Unity-based software experiments, they demonstrated how the system tricks the users into feeling all sorts of textures, as well as the sensation of things like button presses. I wonder how something like this could combine with the electrotactile prototypes we looked at last week to create tiny, thin and flexible all-in-one haptic feedback systems. In other news, developer Thomas Ratliff uploaded an interesting video of a mixed reality prototype he created for the Quest 3 headset. It uses the pass-through feature on the device and includes really cool real-time reflections in the environment. Though it's just a demo at the moment, I think this kind of mixed reality virtual screen concept will become much more prevalent as headsets develop further. The Nemo is a perfect example of this. Last week, the company announced an AirPod case-sized computer and augmented reality glasses, which runs their own Nemo Spatial OS software, allowing users to render up to six virtual displays in the physical environment. I'm curious to see whether the actual display quality and user experience lives up to the trailer renderings. And like I said, I think we can expect to see lots of similar systems launched, especially before Apple's headset is available. In other mixed reality news, I saw this game trailer recently and thought it looked fun. BAM is a multiplayer mixed reality game, kind of like Smash Brothers. Players can place a tabletop arena anywhere in their physical space and play against others online or in person. Once VR headsets are more widely available, I can definitely envisage this kind of gaming experience growing in popularity. The game is now available on the Quest 3. Moving over to electronics, and at a recent tech conference, electronics giant Motorola recently unveiled what they call an adaptive display device, which is basically a phone that bends to take various forms. It's a bit gimmicky currently, but again it's another attempt by companies to create a new kind of device category by playing with form factors. In drone news, and wind turbine company Orsted has begun trials using large drones to transport cargo to their offshore turbines in the UK. These drones can carry up to 68 kilograms per trip, and the company says this will help improve safety and efficiency since they don't have to shut down the entire facility as with other cargo drop-offs. In similar news, Dronamics, the first cargo drone airline with a license to operate in Europe has signed an agreement with Greece's National Postal Service to provide drone deliveries both in the country and further afield. These cargo drones are basically like mini remotely operated planes similar to military and they're expected to begin operations early next year. In research news, a team at ETH Zurich have shown off an interesting drone concept that can attach itself to vertical surfaces, tilt itself, then apply up to 150 newtons of horizontal force to the wall. Designed with construction work in mind, this thing can drill, grind or set anchors with a high degree of accuracy and could be useful for difficult to reach environments. Continuing with the construction theme and I recently came across this other unique robot. The Dusty Field Printer by Dusty Robotics works by automatically printing accurate layouts and important details directly onto the floors of construction sites, saving time and making sure the workers know exactly what goes where. Now for one of the strangest robots you've probably ever seen. At the recent Japan Mobility Show, Sancti Technologies Co. unveiled the SR02, a giant four-legged walking robot that can carry four passengers. It's big, clunky and quite impractical, but you can't deny that aesthetically it looks awesome, like it's straight out of an 80s sci-fi movie. And ending this week with a cool use for automated robots. The Glide is a walking device for those with sight loss and is an alternative to guide dogs and canes. Designed by engineer Amos Miller, who is himself blind, this device has its own vision and sensor systems and can help users navigate by leading, steering and helping them locate doors, elevators and other line of sight destinations. The battery lasts up to 8 hours between charging and the company says they'll be announcing shipping and price details later this year. Alright, that's everything for this update. As always, source links are in the description. Subscribe to the channel for more cutting edge news or check out the MOSFET playlist. See you next time.